entering the USA show. You go retaliate and do what you're just saying, it becomes a gang situation. You can know y'all up against the military, and then y'all become a militarized zone. All right, listen up. Have you been stopped at the U.S. border? Trying to keep it going, you know what I'm saying? But whoever bring the noise, you know, 200 nights to figure out, you know what I'm saying? We got to handle our business. We ain't let nobody step on our toes. Blood, rips, and whoever. Right here, these are that. Do you have a criminal record? You know who you are. Come on, bullet holes, scars. Come on, 19, 20 years in prison. Y.A. Camp, Juvenile Hall, San Quentin, Spokes, Solid Dad, Corkman, Pelican Bay, Chino, The Hole. Well, this show is definitely for you then. I think the police out here primarily arrest criminals. Irregardless of their hue, criminal allegiance, sex, religion, faith, all that. They are out here to arrest criminals. And gang members tend to fall into the criminal realm. They're criminals. They shoot, kill, pack illegal weapons. They're criminals. So as a consequence of that, they have to have a gang division of the police department. No, but the pigs ain't out just to arrest a certain person. They are anti- anti-criminal. I ain't mad at them. That's their job. Bob, oh no, I ain't got nothing to get them. As far as they be a soldier, take money out of the bank. If they swat me on some activity, I got to get out of with them. That's the rule. But I ain't going to fuck with them for no reason. And they ain't going to fuck with me. Because I drive by the rules. I ain't got nothing to get five votes. They push up on me, I'm getting ill. And the motherfuckers going. Now, reaching out to you from the beautiful Pacific Northwest, it's Ken and Lisa. Well, hello, everyone. Thanks for coming back. Hi. Hi, this is the USA Show. A show that's here for you, and only you, and no one else. I most apologize for the technical difficulties, um, but now we'll sort it out. And um, okay. I want to okay. welcome my lovely co-host, uh, Lisa. Hello, Lisa. How are you? Hi, Ken. How are you? I'm doing wonderful. Thanks. I am excellent. And we have uh, our former guest. Um, <laughs> hey, John. How are you? Hey, great, uh, Ken. Thanks for having me on today. Oh, no worries. No worries. Um, John is interested in what happened. Um, to you, uh, Lisa, at the port of entry, I uh, went over briefly to him, and he's very excited to know, along with the rest of the audience. Oh, okay. Hi, John. How are you? Oh, great. Good to hear your voice again. You bet. But, but yeah, for sure. Started, absolutely. Before we get started, we must, uh, of course, pay the, uh, the proper... Tribute to, uh, you know, who, Misty, of course. So how's everyone doing today? Excellent. Excellent. Oh, how are you? Uh, sorry, I had a bit of mini screw-up here two minutes ago. Um, technical difficulties. But it's all sorted out proper. So now we're here. And uh, we're so glad to have John. Because John's up there in, um, in the country, to say the least. Telephone is ringing, pick it up. Your telephone is ringing, pick it up. Well, your telephone is ringing. What the hell? I'll just keep singing till you get a freaking clue and pick it up. Well, your telephone. But you did pick it up, so it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> you can get oh, John. What, what the hell was that anyway? Huh? <laughs> well, that's that's where you are, in, you know, your area. So. I thought it's fitting, it's, oh. it's, it's, you know. Oh, I see. Okay, I got you. I got you. So, uh, had you been over here? Well, hopefully. You know, uh, oh, go ahead. Hopefully, I'll be uh, down south in the warmer weather. Uh, we're just sitting here waiting. I'm sure the snow's going to be flying any day now. Hmm. Well. So far, so far, we've had a 
we've had a pretty nice fall here in Edmonton, Canada, you know? Nice, nice, nice. nice. <laughs> So, uh, Lisa, let's hear what yes. happened to you. I know the audience would like to know. <laughs> All right. I think John would probably want to know because has, John hasn't crossed over yet, has he? No, I haven't. So, of course, I I want to hear, uh, you know, how it was for you. And I know Ken's been helping you out a lot through this whole process, not just getting your letter, but prepping you. Uh, before you did cross, is that right? Totally. Right. And and you know what? I think it's um, better for me to sort of start from before the crossing over and the coaching that Ken did before I get into the actual crossing over part because I think yeah. it's really valid for the audience to know just how valuable Ken has been through the process, not just from, you know, helping helping to get a waiver, but the aftermath, which I think people don't realize that when you go through a lawyer, once you get that waiver in your hands, they cut you off and you still have to cross over the border at some point. And that is just as much of a hassle, I think, as if you have been pulled in for the first time and then you end up in this situation where you have a waiver. So I think it's really important that the audience understands that when you go through this, you're not, you know, it's not like you have immunity all of a sudden once you have this waiver in your hands. This just gives a CBP a bigger, I mean, ample opportunity to pull you aside and start questioning you more. So I think that's, I think people should understand that background before I get into my own story um, because it's very valuable. But uh, I received my waiver very recently, and apparently I broke the record, as you know, John, for having it taking two and a half years to get my waiver. And being that, I obviously was very petrified to cross the border um, because of the how long I waited. And so Ken, uh, I, I talked to Ken about sort of coming up with um, strategies and his opinion on what I should say and what I shouldn't say um, as I'm, you know, being pulled into being to, into questioning, because I knew that the waiver was going to be something that they were going to flag me and say, okay, well, she's crossing for the first time after two and a half years, so now we need to question her, which I was already prepared for. But what I wasn't prepared for was how do I deal with it? And so uh, Ken, Ken and I sat down, and um, I had told him my fears, and one of my biggest fears was they're going to bring up the situation that happened that resulted in me getting a waiver so that I didn't know how to really dodge those questions and how I was going to answer them. So with the strategies that Ken used with me, which were his opinion, not his advice, as he always says, he <laughs> sort of helped me to, yeah, he helped me to sort of come up with um, uh, answers, which are, which are the truth, but, um, you know, in a way that's not going to actually end up hurting me more. And so that's kind of what we did. But the biggest key was, was that Ken actually prepared for me, which is what no lawyer on the planet would do, um, is he prepared with me all of the things that I needed, the documentation in place that I would possibly need um, to cross over with less hassles. Because what they could do is find my story checks out, but then what they were going to try to get me at was okay, well, she doesn't have the proper documentations in place, the documents, and that's exactly what happened. So when I got to the border and I got to the front of the line um, crossing over, um, the, person, the first question he asked me was, is this the first time you're crossing? And I said yes, and immediately he said you need to go into secondary, which was like, okay, that part I was ready for because Ken, like I said, coached me. When I got inside, I wasn't prepared for the stupidity of the CBP officer that was there and the stupid questions they were asking me because they were, some of them were frankly irrelevant and some of them, um, that particular individual was just trying to get me again. And that's what pissed me off. At that point, I did get a little bit scared. Um, and I was at the point, because the way that that person was questioning me, I was about to say, if she kept on pushing it, that just let me just voluntarily withdraw my application to um, enter. 
But at the same time, in the back of my head, I just kept saying to myself, no, because Ken and I have been through this. I have nothing to hide. I'm not doing anything wrong. I was literally only going over to... Um, for the day, I wasn't doing anything other than just legitimately getting gas. So, you know what? Why, why am I scared about this? Like, what, what, what's the reason for me to be afraid? But my fears actually were how they were going to try to get me. And then when I realized, the reality is, is that people are too, and, and I know Ken and I use this word a lot, honest, but I don't even think the word honest is correct. Remember, when you're standing in front of a CBP officer, it's about whether they're going to allow you in, so if you're going to be admissible or inadmissible. So it's basically how much you're going to admit is going to allow you admission into the country. That's how I looked at it. And they could ask me anything they want, but the way that Ken prepared me was so good that I knew that I wasn't going to have any problems. I just had to get over my fears because I didn't really know what they were going to ask me. But in the end of the day, they kind of asked me what Ken sort of had already suspected. So because of the documents being in place that um, Ken had prepared for me, they couldn't say no to me. There was nothing they could do, but that's what they were trying to get me at because they couldn't get me for the past incidents that I had gone through because Ken, like I said, had done an excellent job of preparing me for that part. So the next thing they were going to go after was, does she have the right documents in place in order for her to cross because now we're just going to ding her for that, and they couldn't do that either. So in the end, they admitted me, not without obviously questioning me. And the reality is, is John, I don't think... I, don't, I think I would have been hassled more had the lady not really known what she was doing and um, kept pressing. But the thing is, she decided that she didn't want to deal with me, so she passed me on to somebody else. And he just didn't think it was worth his time. So in a sense, I could have been hassled a lot longer, but I didn't. They, just, they, they really couldn't do anything. So that's kind of how it ended up. And I ended up getting admitted into, it, it, admitted into the country and... Um, you know, I felt great. I was doing like a big dance and a skip in my car and going hallelujah when I crossed and uh, felt great. But um, I'm not going to lie. I, 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 didn't, I didn't enter without feeling a little bit of fear. Well, any, anybody's going to feel apprehensive when they have to go to secondary. I would only assume that. Ken, um, a question that I have is out of all these people that you've helped get a waiver, what do you think the percentages of the people that have had to go to secondary the first time crossing, percentage-wise? I would venture to go as high as 80%, 80%. But, okay. That's pretty, yeah, wow, that, that's impressive. Ha- having said that, I've had 0%, just ignore that, I've had 0% rejected in secondary after we prepared them. Oh, sorry, less than zero percent. Less than zero. Well, Lisa, maybe you can tell the audience. Lisa, maybe you can tell... John, you know what? I'm not surprised by that statistic because, because the way that Ken prepared me, I was very confident when I got... Like, when I was going through the process of being questioned by CBP, I was very confident, but... I also realize, and I am not going to be uh, politically correct when I say this, but the CBP officers are very stupid in the way that they deal with you when you have a waiver. They try to act like they know what they're talking about, but in reality, they have no idea because they have no idea what your situation is. They're just reading notes in a com- on a computer screen. They really aren't that bright, and that's, that's kind of what, I, what it came down to. And if I admitted to things which weren't in that computer system, I would have been honestly probably in a bigger mess. But then I realized that she, doesn't, she didn't know the situation better than I did, right? So why am I going to give her, admit to things and, and provide information that she doesn't really know about it? That's, that's kind of stupid. It defeats the purpose. That the past is the past. You know what I mean? And so I, I hate to say it, but a lot of those officers are just, they're just power tripping. Well, listen, uh, Lisa, could you explain in a little more detail why your confidence level was so, was raised so much because of Ken? And number two, w- when we talk about being prepared with documents, could you be more specific on, on, on that? Um, okay, so sorry, what was the first question again? Well, the first question the is, first question was- your confidence level was raised tremendously 
after Ken pre prepared you? Was it, what, what really raised your confidence level? And number two question is, what type of documents did you prepare that really helped you uh, that, the, that the officers maybe uh, looked at that, that, that helped you okay. cross? Okay, so once I had the preparation with Ken, I felt honestly over 100% confident. And the reason why was because I grew so much from the situation that led me to getting a waiver to now. And what I realized is exactly through all of the information that Ken has given me, the reality is, is that it's all about admission, right? It's how much you're going to say out of your mouth is going to be the key to whether you will be admitted into the country or whether you wouldn't be admitted into the country. And I think one of my biggest fears was, was that, wait a minute, if this woman is going through the system, can she take my waiver away without me saying one word? And I realized, no, she can't. How can she do that? But that's what I was fearing, that, okay, she's going through the system, she's going through the notes, and the way that my wa waiver was done, there, there was a, a situation where I kind of got lucky, I guess, in a sense. Um, to make a long story short, it's it, whatever. But it, it, you know what? I was afraid that she was like, hey, I have the power to now take this away. That's what I was afraid of. When Ken told me that they can't do that, then I was like, okay, that makes sense to me. So if I'm not going to... If it's not going to come out of my mouth that I made a mistake during that time period that I had that waiver, I have no problems. And the reality is, is that if you don't remember something, and that's a lot of what I said, was I don't really quite recall what you're talking about. I, I don't really quite recall what the situation was at the time. It was two and a half years ago. So there's not a lot she could say to me. And that was probably the safest answer that I had in order to rebut what she was saying. And the other thing as well is when she was making statements, I wasn't responding. You don't, obviously, you know, a lot of people, what they do is some of these guys are just talking under their breath and obviously people just respond. And it's like, what are you doing? They're not asking you a question. So... I started preparing myself in those ways that if they're not asking me a question, don't say a word. If they ask me a question, think about what they're saying, okay? If it's about the past waiver and what they're reading through the notes, guess what? They don't know what happened better than I did. Why am I going to tell them anything? It is now I'm going to use Ken's line. It is my opinion. It is my <laughs> opinion that you shouldn't say things about what happened in the past because you're just opening up a can of worms to people um, that, uh, you know, that, that don't need to know what's going on, because then you're going to put yourself into trouble. And that's where I gained the confidence that, wait a minute, this lady has no idea what happened. I'm not going to admit to things. That's the stupidest thing I'm going to do. So that's what I, so I started answering exactly how I was. I don't recall, I don't recall, I don't remember, right? And she couldn't do anything, because if you can't remember, you can't remember. And then the answer to your second question is, is the documents, I think, they're based on every situation. I think it's all um, relevant to what specific situation you're in. For me personally, um, remember, I have um, the, I'm actually going to be eventually moving to the U.S. So th their problems and, their, and what they felt was uh, an issue was, how do they know I'm not going to be just taking off for, and uh, forever and not coming back? So Ken prepared that documents based on that. But I think that, and Ken can attest to this, that's all, uh, that's all going to be um, dependent on each person's um, particular situation with regards to the waiver, correct? Correct. You are 100% correct and more. How, how, is the reaction, how is the reaction that they had... You're being so well prepared because I think you were more prepared than the normal Joe out there that crosses, right? Oh, I was beyond prepared. I had Ken drill me as if he's a CBP officer because I needed it. I needed that. I needed him to pretend he was one and drill me, and then he told me, okay, well, you got 80% this time around when I asked you. That's what I needed. I, I'm the type of person, I need to be simulated in the situation or I need to see it, and that's how I learn it. So Ken basically sat down with me and basically pretended to be a CVP officer and basically what they're going to say, and no doubt about no shit, they asked some similar questions as to what, how Ken drove me. Wow. I want to yeah. also say I actually was harder than they actually could ever be. 
Yes, that is true. The way that Ken asked me questions, he was a lot harder than the way that the CBP officer asked me questions, so I felt beyond prepared. You know, I felt like, okay, this is a walk in the park. And honestly, John, the second time I go, I am not afraid. I know exactly what I would do. I would do the same thing I did last time. And I'll be honest with you, I was textbook because I had rehearsed. When it came down, and I think the audience needs to realize this, they're always going to ask you, no matter what waiver you have, they're going to ask you, what happened? That's the first question they're going to ask you. Whether you are you know, going to the first officer and then going into secondary inspection, they will ask you that question. I had a textbook response for that, and I didn't falter from what I said because I had it memorized. And, um, and I will never, ever change that answer no matter how many times I go through. So I think that's step one. Memorize what you're going to say when it comes to what happened during that time period. Keep it very brief. Mine was extremely brief. It was three sentences. But it got to the point, and I didn't admit to anything to crucify myself, basically. Well, I can say if everyone was as perfect and well-prepared as you, Leah, I would be out of business. I would have no business. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, I think the reason why you have business is because you prepare people. And um, and if, if you didn't, and this is what I was saying in the very beginning, is that lawyers, I mean, I I totally can see the way that Ken has given us the service, John, and the way a lawyer would. A lawyer is taking your money to get you a waiver, and they don't care if you have the waiver or not. Okay? Let's face it. That's the truth. But after that, once you have the waiver, it's sayonara. See you later. Good luck. But people don't realize that once you have the waiver, that is not the end-all, be-all. You still have to face CBP, and they are going to harass you because this is now the first time you're crossing over with this thing, and they don't like it. Frankly, they don't like it. They want to give you a hard time. And so where Ken comes in is he goes above and beyond that by preparing you for that first cross across the border so that you're, you're not afraid. And, and so you're not just the type of person that's just a client, and it's like, see you later. And I think that's very important. People need to realize that that's the kind of service you need during this situation. Also, well, I, you know, if, if, if I could interject for a second, I, I can remember crossing in 1995, you know, not knowing anything about, I mean, the education I've got from you, Ken, in the last, how long have we known each other? The last Almost year and a half, two years? I, I would say at least that. Because I, I first called you when I got into Canada, but you told me I had to wait a couple of years, right? Right. So I I met you on the phone, but I never actually met you in person till this year, right? Till April. Exactly. But, but just to just to think about how people that cross do not know nothing about what they're doing, and look at what Lisa's learned and how good she's become. And she's a textbook case. But um, crossing in 1995, I mean, when they start, I don't, I don't know if you watch those shows, but now <coughs> with your with your telephone and your computer now. They can pick that telephone up and look at every one of your emails and every one of your texts. <laughs> you know, so you, you you better have your story straight. You know, it's it's like in 1995 when they pulled me through, they could look at my briefcase and see my maps and my business stuff. But nowadays, they just look in your phone and your computer. But unfortunately, um, oh, oh, sorry. One thing I was going to say is, unfortunately, a client spoke to me this week. I'm not sure if he's listening or not, but he likely will hear the podcast. And because his sworn statement was so detailed, and because they looked at his phone and found things that were not to his benefit, they really, really slammed him hard. And and we can still sort him out, but it's actually more work. And this guy has never been arrested, never charged, but he admitted to them that were not in his best interest, and now it just bit him in the ass, unfortunately for him. But we can right. still sort him out. It's right. just more, it's more work. Right. You know, um, one of the things that I learned from the process, John, when you're crossing the border, is you, you give very short answers, 
right? This is a learning lesson. You give very short, sweet answers, and you treat them like they're in grade four. Because seriously, that's the only way you're going to give short answers, is if you pretend that you're speaking to a child, then you tend not to say as much. Because the problem is, is good people and honest, honest individuals, good citizens, talk too much, right? Because they want to admit. <laughs> I'm, I keep saying the key word, admission, right? They admit too much. So think of them as grade four, and that's how I thought of the lady, and she literally acted like she was, so it was perfect for me. And, I mean, she was a bit rude, but, I, like I said, I pretended that she was a really, you know, immature grade four, you know, like an immature 10-year-old. That's how I kind of pictured her. And it worked out in my favor. Yeah, and right? that's why I always say that the easiest clients to clear are these. <laughs> Easy to clear. <laughs> it, 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 oh. <laughs> you have no idea. Right. I didn't hear all that. What's that, John? Hear that? There's a bunch of noise in the background. So you want to be a oh. Wrong one. Oh no! Oh, this is what you missed. Lisa knows what that is. John, you, you may not know what that I is. I do. Yeah, I don't know. No. <laughs> That's okay. It's all good. But, um, yeah, I think just to add to what you're saying, uh, Ken, is I think um, the best way that I can put it is once you've crossed once, your confidence level goes up the roof for sure. And I don't have any uh, concerns the next time I cross. And um, I think I was on another I was on another radio show with another individual, John, and um, he was just saying, at the end of the day, they just want to gain their trust back with you. So crossing a couple times after the first time probably makes a lot of sense. And then I don't think they'll bug you as much. I mean, I think at any point they can obviously ask you and pull you in. But I think if they see in the system that, you know, you're, you're going back and forth, whatever the situation may be, um, I think they just want to lo- develop a level of trust with you again. So it's, it's, I think I would encourage for everyone who has a waiver across at least a few times so that they can gain that trust back. Yeah, I, I, I think, uh, what do you think about that, Ken? I think Lisa is one million percent correct, as uh, as always. Like, I, I always say she's a better host than I am. Um, no. But, yeah, she's 100 or well, one million percent uh, correct. I, I like to have fun and, you know, make money. But she is highly, highly educated. That's an understatement. I, I'm just the... Yeah, that's... Uh, yeah. Yeah. Hey, Lee, Lisa, how long, did, how long did it take you to go through the process of going through secondary and getting cleared? How long of a time did you spend, you think? Um, actually, you know, to be very honest, John, the questioning part... Oh. <laughs> the questioning part didn't take very long at all, actually, because I was so prepared. It was the lineup that was the pain in the ass to be honest. And uh, I think I spent more time in the line. Hello? Are you okay. guys there? He's here. Yeah, okay, perfect. I, can hear you. I spent more time standing in a line than I did actually being questioned. So I was standing in the line for about 45 minutes. I got to the front. Lady, you know, went through the system, read through the notes. She probably spent maybe 10 minutes questioning me. She didn't want to deal with the situation because she was obviously too stupid to deal with it, and she didn't really quite get it because she was young. So then she made me sit back down again, waiting for another person to come take over. So, again, I had to sit for another 15, 20 minutes. And then when that guy came back, when, when, I, when he called me back over, he didn't question a thing. So in total, my questioning was maybe 15 minutes, but my wait time was like probably an hour and a half. 
However, I don't think that this is going to happen to me every time. I just think that, I think that, uh, you know, personally, I think that maybe it might be, they might question me longer next time. Like, I don't know, right? Because as Ken has always said, they can question you at any point. Maybe the next time I go, they might not even put me into secondary. You don't, you just don't know. All you got to do is just remember to say the same thing because you're giving a sworn statement every time you cross. So you do need to have textbook answers for some of the things you're saying and don't falter from that because the next time I go, I'm going to say the same textbook answer I said the last time. Wait, wait a minute. There's one thing you just said, at least slightly off. It's not so much you're giving a sworn yeah. statement every time. Um, the sworn right. statement is when you actually swear and sign and raise your hand. It's every time you cross. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, you're giving a quote unquote a definitive answer slash response to their question. Just so there are you know in the system about that when you cross? No, no, no. It's one statement is when you raise your hand, swear, and they ask the question, you sign. That's a sworn statement. But not everyone gets the right. Answer, but they they get questioned for their quote unquote admissibility because they have to be what they call again quote unquote deemed admissible to enter the USA. So the dean right, and my question, I guess, I guess my question is, is, do they not put notes in the system every time you cross them? Sometimes yes, sometimes no. I think they. Well, I'm I'm just thinking if you have a waiver. I think I think from what I recall from my process, and you know this, Ken, they had notes in the system prior to when I got removed. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, that's different. And I didn't even realize they had notes in the system. Right, so you're saying it can happen sometimes, and then sometimes it, they don't, they may not. Like, is that what you're saying? It really depends upon they might put the notes situation, in- who you get, what time of day. It really, really, really just depends. Sometimes they do, sometimes they do not. Generally speaking, if they're typing okay. while chatting with you, notes are going into the system. Okay, so nobody typed anything when I was there. Okay, so yeah, so they, I mean, they may have typed it when you left. I mean, it. You are ninety nine point nine percent fine. They can't really do anything to you. Yeah, no, that's really how I felt. Jump on, actually. But they're they're putting they're 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 putting a a stamp in your passport showing you going back and forth. Number one, so if they're looking at your passport, plus they're probably entering that in the system that if you say you're coming back in a week or a, a day or or whatever, and you just keep doing that for a while, they're going to get more comfortable with you, I would only assume, right? That's what I thought, too. And and that's... Yeah, that's what I thought, too. Because, I mean, I was only going for the day. I came back within the day. I was honest about my my purpose of my trip. I didn't really have a lot to fear, to be honest with you, because I knew why I was going and why I was coming back. And um, I didn't have a reason to lie about that. So... They didn't have a lot to say to me. They just tried to get me on what happened with my waiver situation, of which I was already prepared for that. Because, like I said, Ken did an excellent job of preparing me for that part. The okay. actual and travel I, and the purpose, I didn't really need to prepare for that part. That was pretty obvious, right? My ego, my ego is so large now, I can't even fit through the door. As it should well, be, I'll, Ken. <laughs> I'm going to have another bear on there. <laughs> Good. I'm Good. trying to come I mean, up. I mean, yeah, no, absolutely. And you know what? Um, ah. You know what the funny thing is, John, is when I was standing there and this lady was trying to question me, but she couldn't get very far, the guy beside me became inadmissible for the day. I don't know what it was that, that his situation was, and I thought to myself, oh, God. <laughs> because at this point, I'm still getting questioned by this lady. But... Um, you know, it it just it just it reminded me and it clearly it just it just, you know, rings the bell again that these guys don't really want to let you in. It doesn't matter who you are. They they really try hard not to let you into their country, which I think is such a disservice and it's so bad, but it is what it is, right? Exactly. The yeah. proof is actually on the alien, um the proof that they're admissible not on C B P and people don't realize that. Yes, I agree. And people like people who know about my situation always say to me, oh, you know, 
so you got, you know, you got questioned and, you know, it sucks because you have a waiver and it's just so much harder. And my response to that is, no, that's not true. It's just as hard for any of us. The thing is, is now I have the tools and the skills to prepare myself better than all these people who don't have a waiver yet, right? Because some of these people, when they cross the border, they kind of do not say the right responses and they could be one of those people that could get removed. So just because I have a waiver, it doesn't make me... Um, more prone to being questioned differently. I think everybody has that. Anybody can be open to that. It's just how you, it's just if you piss the person off, that's it. And, and the reason why I know this is because a lady standing behind me in line, she was freaking out. And I said to her, are you okay? And she said, well, I guess, I guess what happened was a lady didn't stop in front of the window where you're supposed to stop your car. She went too far forward and it pissed the guy off. And then he port threw runners. her into secondary. What's that? They call they call those port runners. Right, and she port was runners. she was like, you know, I'm freaking out. She said, I'm freaking out. She's like, I've never ever been questioned before, have you? And I'm like, yeah, I have. I'm like, I have a waiver, so you can imagine I have been questioned. And the the, the kicker is, John, she was American. <laughs> so oh. this guy was pissed off that his fellow American did this, and he threw her into question, secondary, and she was like, great, I didn't do anything, I'm, I'm heading home, you know, I just came across the border to go to a friend's party, I've only been here for two days, what do you think is going to happen? I'm like, listen, you're American, you're fine. I'm like, it's not Canadians in this lineup that have the issue. So, she, she, my she should be so lucky. Yeah, what she that? should be so lucky. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, God. I John, you are 100% okay. Once you get the one thing that we discussed, send that to me. We'll put together um, your prop, your, well, your appropriate ties, <clears throat> so you can make what's called the uh, "quote unquote" proper presentation in every way, shape, and form. And when it's done, you would have less than zero issues crossing over. You, you know, you have already well, 99% of the stuff. So just that one thing we discussed, and that's it. Well, and and that that's another thing I was going to say, uh, Lisa. Is John is so so thorough. Uh, I guess I could just kind of of relate it to what these attorneys do to you and suck money out of you the way they do, and seem like they care less and less about your situation. And and I got myself in such a a bad situation when I was in the U.S. before I crossed back to Canada. And just thinking how little my attorney, after giving him thousands of dollars uh, of, of money, did for me compared to what Ken's been doing for me. It's, it's just, I can't, I can't even put it in dollars and cents because it's, and Lisa, you got to understand, you, you probably can relate to this. It's, it's so emotional what we go through. It's, it's, it's your life that you're talking about. And, and you got a, a guy that's making 20 some dollars an hour that has the power to be able to tell, tell you what to do, which, which kind of sucks, but it's just something you have to deal with. But just think about the short little period of time, because you're so prepared when you cross, that you're going to get through it, and in, in, in you're going to stand in line a lot longer than you're going to be in secondary. And that means a lot, because there's people... That, that are in secondary for two to four hours, miss their plane, miss, miss their connection, because they get themselves in the jam. Right, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, for sure. You're right. And I tell you, so, those are the one, the easy, they, they want the easy fish, the big fish they cannot catch, you know, so because they cannot catch the big fish, you know, the the easy ones are just the ones they, uh, you know, want. And remember, a lot of these guys, they hire, you know, for like this. Your telephone is ringing, pick it up. Your telephone is ringing, pick it up. That's from those states where that's the, the norm. So they grew up, you know, in that way, listening to that music. They join the army. They go, you know, around the world and military. You know what I mean? And everywhere this, we go, oh, everywhere we go, this is what they deal with the know, military. This is what they think, actually. Tell them, tell them. United States Marine Corps! United States Marine Corps! 
Not a safe marine corps. Not a safe marine corps. Just bad hearing this. Oh, three, oh, oh. So then these guys leave the service and they get offered the jobs at the uh, port of entry. So now you're dealing with a guy who grew up in the hillbilly, in the sticks. He just got off the uh, Marine Corps, left the military. And he is grade 12, if he's lucky. And he's combat trained. Mm-hmm. Hey, well, you know, um, I want to be on this show, and I want to be like Lisa. I want to cross, and I want to be able to come back on this radio show and tell my experience, because we haven't even completed getting my package together and, and prepping me and getting me across that border like you've gone through already, Lisa. But I want to be letting you know, and I, I, I hope you and I can stay in touch because you know it's it's kind of lonely out there when you go through this by yourself and you you don't you, it's nice that Ken kind of put us together so we could kind of talk about and relate to what what it's like because I remember telling Ken today because I'm getting so nervous and all balled up about this thing about crossing and I should relax because I'm not doing anything wrong just like Lisa said I'm I'm just trying to I'm just I'm just trying to go down. Down to Vegas for a week and, and gamble like like all the other Canadians want to do. You be nervous. You have no reason to be nervous, uh, my brother. No reason whatsoever. I agree. There's no reason. You are not. You're not doing anything wrong. You're if you're going to Vegas to go, you know, go to the casino. There's nothing wrong with that. There's many people that do it on a daily basis. And, um, yeah, they might pull you into secondary. They might question you about the waiver, but they're not going to question you about your intentions going to Vegas. Um, well, that you part... About why you have the waiver. Yeah, but, Lisa, that part is clear. And let's, let's clear this up with everybody that's listening in. Because every single person on this line has a different story has a different exactly. beef with INS. See, what, what Ken started me out, and my attorney never did for me, was as soon as Ken met me, he went and, and got me to, to get all the information that they had on me so that, that I knew what they knew. Most right. importantly was I knew what they didn't know. So... There's things in your record that might, or there might be things that you did that might not have been in your record. You don't know that until you see your record to see what the hell's in it. So exactly, if, if and you know, exactly. If if you don't know what's going on, then you're in the dark. You got to know when they when they start pressing that computer when you're standing there in front of them, and they start looking at that right. computer. You can be you got to know what they're looking at. And, and you have every well, you right know to know that. I, I can... Based on my... That, based, on, um, based on my experience, is you have no idea what's written in that computer, so you shouldn't admit to anything. That's, that's, that's what I got out of it. Because as soon as you start admitting to stuff that's not on that computer, you will make yourself inadmissible again. So for me, and this is just what I did because this was how I had, how I, I mean, remember, my situation was two and a half years ago, so my response was, I can't recall. I, the notes in your system must be more accurate, might be more accurate than what I can recall. That way, I'm not admitting to anything that's in that computer, and this way, I'm not crucifying myself at the same time. So that's how okay, I dealt with it. Let me, let me explain this to everybody so they understand what I'm trying to get to. Okay? The point about me going to Vegas and, and having a round-trip ticket with a, a room, a hotel room, I'm not staying with a friend, I'm going, to, right. I'm going to a hotel room like every other tourist does. Most Canadians probably don't know Americans, so they're going to a hotel room. 
<laughs> I could go stay at friends' house in the U.S. for the rest of my life. <laughs> I don't want them to know that. So why I say this is, Lisa, your situation when they ask you this pointed question is, um, what what are they trying to bring up on your past, and how do they ask you that question is, you know, what what did you do wrong or what happened and and what is your answer going to be to that? I've got a 30-year INS record. My file is probably the last time I went in with my wife in the U.S. to go through an, an I-30, I think it's called, to get a, a marriage waiver. Um, I think the, the file was probably well over probably 6 to 12 inches thick. I'd say more like 12 inches thick. I, I, so, hey, John. So that's why I'm trying to get to this. Just let me finish. Is Everybody's past is different. So when they ask that pointed question, <coughs> i got to condense 30 years <coughs> in, in one or two sentences. Like Lisa um, um, took her you know, her whole situation and, and, and made it very simple for a grade 12 person to understand. And that's the power of a Ken. Because I know by the time I get in front of that person, by the time Ken's done with me, I'm going to know my my, my two-sentence answer because I've got 30 years of shit in my, in my, in my past. And Ken knows that. I, I was... Yeah. Remember, everybody, remember everybody on this call... As far as my attorney that I gave thousands and thousands of dollars to in San Diego, once I got to Canada, he told me I was inadmissible for life. Ken, so you I had probably a, shed some light on his question. Uh, I, I, I tell you, uh, I tell you, John, the, I'm not saying your stuff wasn't serious, but, and I'm not trying to, trying to water it down any way whatsoever. However, the people they really, really want... A gangsta is attempting to reach you on your cellular device. A gangsta is attempting to reach you on your cellular device. That's who they really, really want. Uh, to them, as far as they're concerned, on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 meaning the, the chap I just played, you're probably uh, a, a, a 2 plus, as far as what they're looking for. Well, however, if you want to be a 12 plus, you can by ch overly chatting, but you're actually only a two plus. So I guess if just keep it that way. <laughs> keep it that way, Lisa. You be a you're down to a Lisa. You're down to a one plus. <laughs> <laughs> you want to be a two plus? Or a I don't know what I am. <laughs> Maybe a one minus. No kidding. You're a one. So you're a one. Good. Forget the minus. Yeah. Oh, right, right, that's good, that's plus. good for me. Most of the guys we get are 15s. Right, and you know, really? I think, John, I think, what, I think what you really do need to do is not mention what's on that screen, because you can't see that screen, and what the lady tried to do was she tried to confuse me enough to make me admit to something that I shouldn't admit to, and I didn't, because I was like, you know what, I know what this lady's trying to do, she's trying to make me say that what I did in my past was not right. And if I had said those words, I would have been inadmissible for life. And I was refusing to do that because, A, that's not the truth. And secondly, it's really it's none of her business. So my answer was, I don't recall, which is technically the truth. Because if you think about it, it's been two and a half years since the situation happened. I don't remember really what happened. Life goes on. And yeah. it's... I'm not going to admit to something that I don't recall. And because of that, I didn't recall, and that was my answer. Well, you know, as a matter of fact, I, I can, you know, I've been getting this Alzheimer's has been coming on, and shit, I couldn't even remember my sister's name the other day, never mind what happened to me in 1995. No, uh, no, no, geez. Wait, 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 you, you, you just touched upon something. You just touched upon a topic, and Glenn said that. Because when you deal with CBT, and the minute you hear this, too clear. what you just said does not exist. Because if you mention what you just said, after you, the minute you pull up and you start hearing too this, clear. 
you are going to have trouble. If it's not documented in any database or system, it never occurred. If the glove does not fit, you must acquit. <laughs> so if it's not I agree. Hundred percent. Never happened. If you admit just you essentially you dug your hole, you jumped in it, and you and you basically said, Just start covering me with soil. Well be more specific on what you're trying to get to, Ken. You just said you Alzheimer's, which is not is not applicable to you. If you mention that to oh. them, there's a separate code in the immigration category. Um, it's physical, and if if they deem a person has a mental disorder, uh, how can I explain it? It's essentially if you're deemed to have a mental disorder, that makes you to yourself and there's no one there to care. It's more technical than this, but that's essentially it. You are inadmissible. Like, for example, if you called 911 right now and said you're going to jump off the, uh, let me think, that you're going to go to the top of the West Edmonton Mall and jump off the side because life is just too harsh, you go to hospital there, they discharge you. CBP has access to that record. And you're going to cross, they're going to say, hey, what happened at, at the uh, West Edmonton Mall? And you say, oh, well, I was going to jump off the side. Well, why? Well, I just wanted to end it all. Oh, okay, well, go, go, go have a seat. You just made yourself inadmissible. Well, that's a good point to make, too. And, uh, you know, obviously I would never say that to a, an officer. I was more, you know, kind of kidding around here a little bit uh, okay. uh, memory-wise. I'd, I'd never say, you'd never want to, because when I was going through the process of getting my green card, you got to remember all the medical shit you have to go through and you have to pass all those tests because you got you got issues medically and then you got all kinds of other problems. You know, um, so... But, it, uh, by the way, but that doctor is not on your what side. What the hell is all this noise? <laughs> Lisa, you know what the what it is. I do, but I don't think John gets it. Oh, okay. No. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what it is, so... But anyway, I, I kind of figured somebody must be doing it, right? Because I, I hear you talking... <laughs> About something, and then I don't hear the rest of the, you know, the rest of whatever you say, right? So well, that's I because that. I pause for stuff like. Now we're back to reality. I like I like to mix things up and have right. fun. That way, you know, it's not dry and people like, like it, find it entertaining. And it is the best. Well, Lisa, how many how many shows have you been on? Oh, maybe three now. I guess. Yep. Okay. Yeah, three oh, shows. Three. Okay. All right. Well. Maybe we can meet someday in Florida. I got a friend down in Clearwater, Florida. I love that place in the winter. It's beautiful. Sounds good. Sure is better than Edmonton, Canada. It sure is better than Edmonton in, in January, I'll tell you that. <laughs> or any any time from November November till uh I guess May, huh? You know? You got the Sherlock no no, you got the Sherlock Holmes right. pub there. I mean at the West Edmonton Mall. You got what? The Sherlock Holmes pub at the West Edmonton Mall. Oh. Yes, that's right. Oh. Yeah, the Sherlock Holmes pub. You got the that mall. You got the second floor. You got the gun range. You can go shoot. I mean, so many things there. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. Well, when you're used to living in Las Vegas for 35 years, it's uh, pretty hard to come close to that, right? <laughs> oh, right. Hmm. I anyway. never, never knew. Well, I, anyway. By the way, the second part of the show, um, 
this is cool, you know, mind you. But the second part we're going to do, um, if Lisa has a bit more time, the thing is, these shows now in society, society, society tends to re- to respond more to the smut like slash scandalous type topics. If it's too educational, the people they generally get bored because their mind cannot grasp the uh, concepts. So what I do is I keep it mixed up in a lot of the you know the fun silly stuff like like I was telling you like with the um, you know the or the this is a test. This station is conducting a test of the emergency broadcast system. This is only a test. Which is the way you never want to hear. You never ever to hear that, by the way. You know, people like the kind of you know the fun <laughs> stuff like this because then they listen more. Or this sound like here, which is the okay sound. <laughs> so, you know what I mean? It just depends. Or I mean. Or even this. So you wanna be a punk? All that shit. Smoke me, motherfuckers, don't eat. You know, people like that's the kind of stuff they like and draws ratings in, and and then people say, oh, what else are they talking about? Oh, okay, that's cool. Then it's kind of, kind of like a marketing and interest. But at case in point, when you deal with CB, think of this. For $1,000, what day comes after Sunday? Brian? French toast. That's incorrect, Brian, and guess what? Give me hit, man. You lose. Oh, wow, it's right, because marijuana has made you a complete imbecile. There you go, TVT. <laughs> They'll be pissed with oh, me. They'll totally be, you know, be pissed with me, but... Uh... When do I care what people think? Cause as, you know, as it is, people already, you know, consider me this. Apparently, that's me anyway. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. We were going to just talk about this Jihain uh, Gamoshi. I can't pronounce his name. I think it's right. Jihain Gomeshi or Gomoshi? Jihain Gomoshi. <laughs> the guy who... Gomoshi, okay. Not- yeah, the accused narcissist, which I am as well. The accused narcissist, who's accused of having rough sex with a bunch of uh, women. Right. What do you think of that? What 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 do I think of it? Yeah. What do you? I wonder what constitutes rough sex. I mean, how how far do you go before you 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 pass the uh, point of no return? Or you cross the line? Where do you cross the line when it's when it becomes more than rough sex, right? It just depends on how... This is the cell phone detection system. The chick on the other end of the phone is so smoking hot. If you don't pick it up, dude, I will. So it depends on who is the phone. I mean, who it is, is what I should say. But, you know, me, me just being a bloody pig, I, um... I put on this Facebook post earlier that I fully support him and, of course, Tom Likas. You wouldn't believe the hate mail I got from so many birds. Oh! On it. One, one bird is ready. I'm surprised she didn't give us a jingle. She just hates my uh, hates my guts. Oh. oh, wow. Right. Well, I guess everybody's got an opinion, right? Yeah, and the feminists, which, Lisa, I don't think you're a feminist. No. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. Oh, I'm not a feminist. I am I am practical in the sense that I like try to look at both sides of the situation as best as I can. Perfect, perfect, perfect. I, 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 that's why we get along so great, because you're not a feminist. I go to the... Is that, right? <laughs> is that what it is? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, I go to the all the time, and I meet women, and then they... <laughs> they are. Oh my I god! I meet women at the pubs who are. I said, "Fuck off, cunt." Who has your fucking opinion anyway? And they said, "You're such, you're such an asshole." I said, I see what cunt? Just do something useful. Go make me a fucking sandwich. That's what the fuck you can do. And they look at me like that, like I'm uh, mental. But the thing is, I'm just very real and up 
from and you know friends or family, people who are close, fight all for, and ones who just want to, you know, start the uh, the pick and the nit, nit, I just say fuck off. And this poor Gian Gahomi, he just has you know his career just trying to make things happen. Just because one bird is upset, now you got two others coming out of uh, woodworks and saying such a what you know what a bad lad he is, and because I. You wouldn't believe the hate I'm receiving on the uh, the Facebook. Yeah. Do you use Facebook a lot, Ken? Uh, uh, just about everyone on the planet is using it. Huh? Just about everyone on the planet is using it. Well, to what well, degree? Yeah. Everybody's different that way. I mean, how much time you spend on it? I'm sure everybody just about has an account, but, um, you know, whether it's active or not, I, or how much time they spend on it, you know, um, I don't, I don't, I'm one of those people that wouldn't want every, I wouldn't want everybody to know what I'm doing all the time, you know, but I'm an old dinosaur. Mind you, I don't put too much personal data there or where I'm going, what I'm doing, but I put certain things yeah. there that, uh, just, I feel are um, deemed releasable because a lot of these birds, these women who go to the uh, the Facebook, you know, it's just like in the pubs, you know, they're just, just like, it's just how they sound in the pubs. And they could have said, are you, are you there, Lisa? Are you laughing? No, 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 I'm still here. I, You know what, it's funny we're talking about this topic because it's been so controversial and it's everywhere. You open your laptop and you, you know, go on to like Google or Yahoo, it's like front page news on there. It's just the TV shows, everyone's talking about it. And I don't know if I really have an opinion about it, but I just think that uh, I think when you're doing something privately in your bedroom with somebody and you know, that becomes public, I think it's really, I think it's really detrimental and it can damage you. And I think that's kind of what happened to him. I'm not, I'm not saying that what he did is right or wrong. None of us were in his bedroom. We don't know what happened. So technically, we, none of us can judge what this guy's gone through and what he's going through right now and what happened in that bedroom at that time. None of us can. But if it was consensual, then, which obviously it sounds like it was, right, for a lot of these women, but they're just coming out now because it's now, you know, it's like it's like when you have a class action lawsuit, right? One person comes out, then they all start talking. It's sort of like that, right? And I find that generally a lot of these, a lot of it comes from, um, you know, just trying to get back at somebody sometimes. Uh, I'm not saying that that's the situation in this case. I'm not saying that at all, people. I'm just saying, but sometimes that is the way that people behave. People are now just probably like, oh, screw this guy, so now let's just go after him, Right? But if it was consensual, then there's nothing they're going to be able to do about it. If it was consensual and both of these two parties agreed, then seriously, coming out now makes no sense. Exactly. Oh, by the way, if the audience wishes to call in, number is 845-277-9357 or 845-277-9357. you're calling the yeah, it'd be interesting United to get another person's perspective. Mm-hmm. I totally agree. In fact, I may ring up. Actually, it's one lad here. Let me see. I'm getting buzzed here. I'm too, I have, this is the second beer, so I may start sounding a bit different. I don't know if you can tell the uh, difference, but um, like, how do I, I don't remember how to work this board here. What do I do here? Do I miss supposed to? Uh, is anybody calling? Oh, it's, oh, it's like fuck it. I, I see all these numbers on the board lit up here, but no one wants to call in. I guess they're, they're I guess shy. We can say, but well, I, I'm surprised. I mean, it's all over, all over every talk show that I've seen. Has to, I mean, this guy. Let's face it. This guy has become famous from the situation too. Oh, I didn't yeah. know who this person was. To be honest with you. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I would have never known. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, I agree. One, and then the one bitch earlier who 
for the MSN Facebook who just fell on me like a ton of bricks. I said, let me tell you something. I said, there's a lad named Jer- Jeremy Meeks. You can Google Jeremy Meeks. Jeremy Meeks is an L.A. Crip gangster. And apparently, according to the, the various, the women, they said that he's so, they, their mind, they claim he's so, quote-unquote, hot, that on Facebook, so many of these women said he can come by their place and do whatever he wants to them. And his his record is for violent offenses with weapons. And it just goes to show you how just because he's good looking and celebrity, these women don't care what he did. They just want him to come by and spend a night with them. And I think it was similar with the whole again, is because he's famous. They did not mind spending the time with him, but now that because one complained, which I suspect because he did a boyfriend, she says, Oh my god, oh my god, I feel so abused. And the others from flocking to him. But if you Google right. Jeremy, J E R E M Y, if you want now, Meeks, M E K S, and you see his photo and read, read up on him, you will see all the women who are crying over this guy. They, they want this guy to spend the night with them. And he's an LA Crip gangster. He's virtually a killer. <laughs> now you tell me, where's the common sense in that? You know what, uh, Ken, there is no common sense in that, but, you know, I know of other many situations like that. I don't know if you guys remember, but Scott Peterson, uh, this was back in early 2000s, he was accused of murdering his wife and their unborn child, and they found mm-hmm. her body in the San Francisco Bay. Remember that situation? Um, mm-hmm. That guy, What's he's that? in jail. He's in a maximum penitent- uh, penitentiary prison, and he gets love letters in prison all the time because he's a good-looking <laughs> guy. That's just sick-minded to me. It is sick. So, so now we're gonna comp- now we're gonna complain about this Gian Gomeshi or whatever his name is, um, and his situation is completely different. But it's kind of similar because these women at the time didn't come out, and what he was doing with them was a secret. But now it's all coming out now, and so. I find that I find that highly, you know, it's just it's to me it, it makes you suspicious. It really does because now it sounds to me like it's it's going to be like a hate. It's a hate on against this particular individual. And let's get him. And I think people who are celebrities get that more. It's like the way that you want to destroy people. It, 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 people have that mentality. I'm not saying all the women are doing that. Maybe some of them are coming out and saying it wasn't consensual. He beat me. I don't know. I don't know the story full well. But I think some women are just coming out because it's the fame part of it. You know, it's or a famous person, fame. so let's just get them. Or, or they want their fame. Exactly. And they want the, I think. They want I'm money. not saying I'm an expert. Oh, well, of course you are. You are an expert. <laughs> <laughs> not in this. I don't even know this. Now you're right on yeah, the do you really want me to get in I trouble have. on the radio? Uh, yeah. Okay, no, no. you got to hear this video. Basically, these lads were doing an experiment. And what they did, they had a Lamborghini, mind you. They were downtown, I think, California somewhere. And they said something about that they pretty much can get any woman to jump in a Lamborghini and leave with them. You wouldn't believe the women that jumped into this Lamborghini. One girl, she was there with her um, boyfriend, mind you. And this guy walks up and says, hey, um, this is my Lamborghini. And which you know, I just want to give you a quick ride right in the hood. And first, for like the first you no know, ten seconds, she was like, "Oh, I don't know, I don't know." The minute she saw that car, she starts walking with the guy to the car, and the boyfriend said, "Hey, what, what, what? Wait, wait, wait." She said, "Well, I won't be long." <laughs> right. <laughs> but you know, uh, then I have a question for you too. Yeah, then I have a question for you too because I would love to get a guy's perspective, like John and Ken. I w- I would love to. Do you guys believe that, and I already know Ken's answer, so I don't know why I'm asking you, because we've had these discussions before, but John, let's get John's perspective first before we get yours, Ken. Do you believe that women generally, if they saw a guy who was really good looking, let's just say, John, really good looking, but didn't have a lot, like maybe he was, you know, not doing, not as successful, 
versus a not so attractive, clearly not so attractive guy that was wealthy, who do you think women are going to go for in general? Well, it depends on what stage of life the women are in, number one. But from where I'm from, they're usually going to go with the guy that has more. Yeah, okay. But, and you know, you, most, mostly I would say that from where I'm from, most women want it all. They want the hot guy and the money. But if they had to have the choose, I mean, look at that. Look at that guy uh, that went to jail. What's his name in Beverly Hills? The guy that did all that uh, music. I'm trying to Phil Spector. Do you think that guy's good looking? Right. No. Probably not too many people would think that. But could he could he go out of his house and hop in the in the limo and drive down the hill to the to the restaurant and and take home the uh, the hostess? Probably. Probably a pretty good shot he had to do that, which he did many times. <laughs> so I would have to say that. And, of course, you know, I, from where I, where I come from, and, and Vegas is pretty flashy. So, <laughs> you know, it's right. all about what you got, you know, and what you drive I, and everything well, else. I have another video. Absolutely. And there's a car, mm-hmm. there's a car called, uh, it's a car, apparently there's some car that's one point million dollars. It's called a Bulgatti or something along those lines. Bulgatti, you mean? Bit, yes, you know, you probably know, you likely know. And, the Bugatti and that's not because I'm chasing a guy with one. Okay, let's just make that very clear. No, no, no. <laughs> I just I, know the name yeah. of the car. <laughs> yeah, 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 no, you, you like nice things, which is fine. They they just <laughs> another video here, <laughs> and what they did in this case, the guy says, "This is my car." And he, he stopped the girls on the street and said, oh, this is, this is the car here. And basically, he says, hey, he came out and said, hey, would you like to come have sex with me? And the girls, every single girl other than one, they first said, well, wait, I don't know you. He said, well, this is my car. The minute he showed the car, he says, oh. He said, we'll come right back. And the one girl says, well, how long will we be? <laughs> and he said, not long. And her girlfriend was like, oh, hello, you don't know him. And she said, well, she got in that car and left with him. Didn't even know. Wow. Just because he had to. I, I yeah. have to send you the video. Wow, that's impressive. And just like this is, and, and this is. Got in that car. Right, go ahead. Didn't know the guy. But, you know, it, but there are classic examples of this, John and Ken. Like, I, I'm not trying to diss anybody in the celebrity world, but, like, okay, first, for example, the one that comes off the top of my head, Donald Trump and Melania Trump. Like, let's oh, yeah. face it. I. Like, I mean, come on. Like, I, how can we. Is Donald Trump a good-looking guy? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know of a lot of women who would say he is, right? But his wife is really pretty, and she's young. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, of course. When you got that, when you're not just have that kind of money, but you're living that kind of lifestyle, come on, who wouldn't want that, right? And, yeah. And also, okay, so then it drives the point, then. Or everyone saw we had a bit of technical difficulties tonight. So now um, we shall have another show possibly Sunday. Um, I'm ending the show on my own note here because the other parties, the guests, are gone. So in any event, have a great night and we shall simply see you next time. Here I stand, done bent, gotta represent, South Cent, Trope, L.A., every day, nigga, monthly, yearly, 34 to be exact, nigga, fear me, atomic dog, I'm in your zone, your area, bull massive, pit bull terrier, I'm coming through like the woo dump in chambers, thug life, get it right, nigga, danger, seven shots to my body, ain't no killing me, lock and load, double back, I had you feeling me. 40 Glock up on your block, headshot, chest plate getting blown when the nine knocks, and in the distance ain't no resistance, say your homeboy swear they gonna murder me, said they heard of me, they think I'm on a murder spree, but when they roll up and chase try to find me, that's when I'm dumping with the fat Mac 90, from the cradle to the grave I've been kicking static, I've been around from revolvers to automatic, see I'm a stand up, stomp down soldier, much older, now from back 
back then when I was thugging in my stars on my black swim. See, I'm a G, nigga, married to this thug shit. Here the C-O-E, Sherm Sticks. That's how we do it, kicking back. <laughs> What up? Join us next time for another episode of the Denied Entry USA Show. A show to not only educate you about U.S. entry waivers, but we're also here to help you stay out of trouble. Make your choices in life wisely. Handle your business, or your business will handle you. Yeah, uh, we we right now we gonna we gonna get y'all a little something about what happens on an everyday life over here, man. Each and every day, it's the same niggas, the same people, the same community, whatever. We don't change. <laughs> Stay blank, all in my bottomless pit as I ride, smoking that tie. Oh, till stay lit, my eyes are slow, they clinging like fire. I keep on blazing, but I know I get so higher. See, man, it's something that cut with Levi's on creep. Stop peace if you got beef, let's handle Why you should be denied entry to that country. So, if you're denied entry to the United States for criminality, you know, maybe, you know, I had a bar fight, or maybe you were accused of, uh, you know, I don't know. You know. <laughs> it's okay. You didn't do it. This is what you want to do. You may need a U.S. entry waiver. You may, or you may not. If you do, you want to use sendittoken.com. Sendittoken.com. And once you use sendittoken.com, we can get you clear to enter the United States. Does not matter what your conviction is, whether it's for <laughs> or nothing is matter. impossible. Why? Because we're there, and you need us. Send it to Ken.com. I gotta tell you, folks, wait till Hulk Hogan comes out here. The roof is gonna come off the Bell Center here in Montreal. As the anticipation builds, you can feel it. The legendary. Beat away.